There is an abundance of data to suggest that surgery is likely the wrong thing to do for degenerative meniscus tears. A study recently published in the Journal of Osteoarthritis provides even more evidence to support this claim. In this video, I'd like to review the results of that study as well as go over the meniscus tear treatment protocol that I recommend for my patients to not only treat their symptoms, but also to prevent worse arthritis. Hey everyone, Dr. Jeff Pang here. I think it's important to point out that there are two big categories of meniscus tears. There are the acute tears and then there are the degenerative tears. The acute meniscus tears are commonly seen in young athletes or the younger population. These occur due to some type of trauma or injury, usually in sporting activities. These knees are otherwise healthy and have no signs of osteoarthritis. Typically, the young athletes who have meniscus tears are going to want to try to get that tear repaired. This will put their knee in the best position possible to prevent arthritis in the future. Degenerative meniscus tears are completely different. These occur because of the gradual wear and tear of the knee and are usually seen in the presence of osteoarthritis. I even consider traumatic tears in a knee with arthritis to be degenerative. Now, the reason we don't recommend repair for a degenerative Alternative meniscus tear is because the re-tear rate and failure rates are incredibly high. And this is a direct result of arthritis. An arthritic knee is like sandpaper. The arthritis will put constant wear and pressure on the repair site. This leads to incredibly high re-tear rates that can put you in a worse position than where you first started. And what about just cleaning up the frayed meniscus tear? That's what many surgeons continue to recommend. It's also why arthroscopic partial meniscectomy is one of the most commonly performed orthopedic procedures. I've gone over multiple other studies comparing arthroscopic partial meniscectomy to non-surgical management and the outcomes are the same. Meniscus tear surgery does not result in better outcomes. But one of the major critiques of these studies was that their sample size was small, that they did not capture the entire subset of patients that still benefited from meniscus tear surgery. And because of this, many orthopedic surgeons continue to recommend arthroscopic surgery as a first-line treatment for degenerative meniscus tears. But now, a recent study published their findings to try to end this controversy. This was a systematic review and meta-analysis of four randomized controlled trials with data from 605 patients. They wanted to compare the effectiveness of arthroscopic partial meniscectomy in patients with MRI-confirmed degenerative meniscus tears to non-surgical or sham treatment. Primary outcomes included knee pain, overall knee function, and health-related quality of life at two years follow-up. The authors report that overall knee function and health-related quality of life did not differ between the two groups. They then did subgroup analyses to see if specific patient populations would benefit from surgery. Subgroups included age, gender, body mass index, meniscus tear location, presence or absence of osteoarthritis, self-reported activity scale, mechanical knee symptoms, walking ability, pain scores, knee function scores, quality of life scores, mental health scores. They report that no relevant subgroup of patients was identified that benefited from arthroscopic partial meniscectomy when compared to non-surgical or sham treatment. The authors go on to conclude that since we were not able to identify any subgroup that benefited from arthroscopic partial meniscectomy, we recommend a restrained policy regarding meniscectomy in patients with degenerative meniscus tears. What the authors don't comment on is that some of these studies have reported that not only are there no differences in outcomes between surgery and non-surgical treatments, but that the groups that ended up with surgery actually had signs of worse arthritis. And that's because the meniscus is a cushion. It's a shock absorber. Even a torn and frayed meniscus is still a functional meniscus that can absorb load. And if you cut it out, you're going to have more wear and tear and more arthritis. This is why I actually recommend going one step further than the authors. I recommend that all 
all patients with degenerative meniscus tears should have an extensive trial of non-surgical treatment and that arthroscopic partial meniscectomy should almost never be recommended as first-line therapy. Patients with a completely locked knee are really the only ones who may require surgery. And by the way, if you're finding this information useful so far, please click the like button. It will help the video spread to more people and help them too. Thanks for doing that. Now I get a lot of questions on how I would handle these cases. This is a sample treatment protocol that I use for degenerative meniscus tears and osteoarthritis. I like to break it down into three main sections. Number one is short term with the goal of controlling pain and inflammation. This can be done with NSAIDs, injections, and even supplements. The second is short to midterm with the goal of starting exercise therapy. This comes in two forms. One is cardio and the other is muscle strengthening. Exercise therapy has the same pain relieving effects as common over-the-counter medications such as ibuprofen and naproxen. The third section is long-term with the goal being maintenance therapy. This consists of weight and load management as well as continued exercise therapy and even booster injections with platelet-rich plasma or hyaluronic acid. I'd like to review an example of a patient I recently saw in my clinic and how I applied this treatment protocol. He was a 50-year-old man who previously was very active in sports. He never had any major injuries, but as he became busier in life, he has not been as physically active, especially given his job commitments and time with his family. He had some friends who recently had more medical issues, so he vowed to start being more physically active. But a few months into his new regimen, he started noticing worsening knee pain. He tried to give it some more time, but two months later, the pain persisted. He saw an orthopedic surgeon who got x-rays and eventually an MRI that showed grade two osteoarthritis, as well as a complex degenerative meniscus tear in his medial meniscus. He was recommended to have arthroscopic partial meniscectomy to debride and cut out the tear. He was not offered physical therapy. He was not offered injection therapy. In fact, he was told the meniscus tear was causing his pain and the only way to get rid of the pain was to cut out the meniscus. My patient did not want to have surgery and came to see me for a second opinion. The real tragedy of this is that I hear these stories all the time and I can't imagine how many people go through through with surgery not knowing there actually is a non-surgical alternative that likely results in equal or even better outcomes. In my opinion, when it comes to degenerative meniscus tears, pretty much everyone should try non-surgical management first. So here's what I told this patient. First, there is an abundance of data that shows muscle strength, specifically quadriceps strength, can protect the knee and prevent wear and tear. Stronger quadriceps muscles are associated with less cartilage damage, less bone marrow lesions, less effusions, and less synovitis. This means there is less overall wear and tear as well as less inflammation. Inflammation. The issue with this is that it takes time to build stronger muscles. In addition, because my patient was having a lot of pain, he didn't feel like he could start physical therapy right away. We talked about trying ibuprofen or naproxen as a short-term bridge to try to decrease pain and inflammation. But he doesn't like taking medications, and when he took ibuprofen in the past, he got a really bad stomach ache. We then talked about potentially administering medications into the knee to calm down the inflammation. Ultimately, we decided to proceed with platelet-rich plasma injections to help decrease pain and symptoms. More importantly, studies have shown that PRP injections can help slow down the progression of arthritis by up to 50% when compared to placebo. Three weeks after I gave him his PRP injection, he told me he was already feeling much better. I told him to start a home exercise program and got him into physical therapy for further strengthening and rehabilitation. The focus was to strengthen all the lower extremity muscles, but to pay extra attention to quadriceps strength. I also instructed him to start low impact cardiovascular exercise, such as stationary bike or walking, and to try to work up to 30 minutes every day. This is just one example of a non-surgical treatment plan for degenerative meniscus tears and osteoarthritis. Ultimately, if you are dealing with knee pain, you will want to discuss with your healthcare provider and come up with an individual treatment plan. Surgery should really be seen as a last resort. And if you're interested in learning about other treatment options for a degenerative knee, check out this video next. Alternatively, you can also check out this playlist of videos where I review common supplements used to treat pain and inflammation. Thanks for watching.